This episode of the anime begins with Haruto and his family. His father asks him to be careful on his journey and inquires if he has hidden Lisa's horn and tail, as she seems anxious about it. Then, we see Flay on the ground, very saddened because Haruto chose Lisa over her. Charlotte tries to console her and tells her that evil will never prevail and that Haruto has done his best. The scene shifts to Lias, where his sister enters with a letter from the Margrave. She tells him that she's confident the letter is about Haruto's departure for the royal capital, and Lias realizes there was no need for her to come personally to deliver this news. She explains that she wanted to write a recommendation letter for Haruto, and it's clear that she had a specific reason for going to such lengths. Lias wants to understand the source of his strength, which is why he has been honing his magic and combat skills. However, he still feels like he's drifting further away from it. Despite this, he believes that being in the same school will allow him to learn more about Haruto up close. His sister then asks about her confrontation with their father, and she reveals that she won't back down until she receives the recommendation. She refused to leave her room. This angers her sister, who questions who told Lias about it. He mentions that he overheard it from the guards, suggesting that she might be more obsessed with Haruto than he is. This revelation surprises her sister, as she never had romantic feelings for Haruto or anything of the sort. She gets embarrassed and blushes, clarifying that it's not the case. Lias then tells her that he heard rumors that she is facing a group called Church of Lucifer at school, a new extremist faction masquerading as a branch of the state religion church. They are said to worship a demon and have influence not only within the academy but also throughout the kingdom. They pose another problem as some members have been advocating for the overthrow of the royal systems. Despite that, there's an increase in aristocrats joining them, suggesting additional sources of funding. Rumors also suggest that their mother is connected to this funding, but Lias doesn't understand her mother's motives. She suddenly changed five years ago and refuses to answer any questions, which makes him afraid of her, knowing that she can be quite stern. Now, the entire kingdom is aware of the dispute between King Aquila and the former king. It wouldn't be surprising if the Church of Lucifer tried to exploit this situation. Could it be that their mother intends to overthrow their father using all her resources? Then, his sister tells him that she thinks Haruto might be the only one capable of changing the situation. Lias is quite surprised and thinks it's an exaggeration. His sister explains that she trusts Haruto immensely because he possesses an indescribable power and has the strength to overthrow an entire organization. Suddenly, their mother, Marianne, enters the room and admires the passionate conversation her children are having. She then tells her daughter that she becomes more beautiful each time she sees her, like the former queen. Marianne thanks her for the compliment, but out of the blue, their mother grabs her daughter by the neck and lifts her up because she was looking at the collar around her neck. She asks if her daughter finds it funny, pitiful, embarrassing, or if she's mocking her like the others. This infuriates Lias, and he orders her to let Marianne go. She drops Marianne to the floor and reveals that she was just joking. Marianne tells Lias that it's not proper for ladies to stare with such impudence. She then informs Lias that she heard that he'll be attending the same school as Zenfis, the Margrave's son. She overheard it by chance and is confident that Haruto will come from a distant suburb and may feel lonely. She asks Lias to befriend him and gather information about the Black Knight, Zenfis's son. She emphasizes that he should not share this with anyone else. Lias reluctantly agrees, and their mother leaves the room while laughing, leaving Lias wondering if he has involved Haruto in something terrible. Then, we transition to Haruto and his sister as they enter a house to rest for a while on their way to the capital. They've been traveling for quite some time, having distanced themselves from the castle. Haruto had placed a portal near the capital a few days ago. His sister asks him about his plans to go to the capital, and he informs her that he will be leaving soon to transport the portal there. Flay tries to dissuade him, but he's made up his mind to go to the castle, which frustrates her. Haruto scolds her, and Charlotte asks Flay to calm down and let them focus on their tasks for now. Charlotte then talks to her brother and asks him to leave this place in her care and go fulfill his duties in the capital. Her brother agrees with her and takes Lisa with him to the capital. 
As they make their way to the capital, they find themselves wandering in the forest, as this is the only place where they can hide the portal. They stop on a hill to get a view of the portal, but it's still quite far away. They decide they will have to walk there, and there's no other choice but to do so. However, when Lisa looks behind her, she notices some carts racing in their direction, and behind them is a rampaging beast known as a bison, which appears to be hungry and may attack the humans. When Haruto realizes this, he tells Lisa that he initially thought the bison was just grass, not an actual animal. Despite this, he decides to help the people, even though he knows Charlotte, his sister, will scold him for it. He chooses to assist them as there's still time. Then, we see Haruto transforming into the superhero to go to their rescue. At this moment, the people's cart is destroyed, and they fall to the ground. Haruto quickly uses his powers to save the people from falling to the ground as the bison charges towards them. The girl then decides to divert the monster's attention to allow the people to escape safely. Haruto notices her courage and doesn't immediately come to their aid, believing that she can handle it. However, she can only distract the bison for a brief moment before it strikes her away. In this critical moment, Haruto rushes to their rescue, striking the bison on its head and bringing it to the ground. The girl expresses her gratitude for what he did, and she asks him for his name. Haruto introduces himself, and the girl apologizes for her earlier brashness towards the person who saved her. Haruto then uses his powers to heal the girl's wounds, leaving her amazed because she has never seen magic like this before. Haruto tells her he couldn't bear to see her in pain. The young girl goes to check on her teacher and assures her that she's okay thanks to the boy. She then looks at Haruto and thanks him again for helping them, mentioning that she was able to defeat the huge monster. Haruto, taking on his superhero persona, responds that there's no need for thanks and that he is justice bringer, not expecting any reward. He then fixes their damaged cart, which is actually a travel carriage. He tells them that people who can't afford much can ride it, and they will receive monetary compensation. Justice Bringer's work here is done, and he plans to return the bison to its herd and leave. The girl expresses her wish that more people would think like him, and she hopes to meet him again. However, Haruto doesn't respond and leaves with Lisa. When Lisa appears gloomy, Haruto asks her why she's been frowning the whole time. Lisa explains that the girl felt like a stranger to her, which surprises Haruto. She adds that she would understand the reason if she got closer to her. As they continue on their way to the royal capital, Haruto spots a group of people gathered by the road, heading to the capital as well. He decides to take further action. Afterward, Lisa goes to check out her room and is surprised by its beauty. She asks Haruto about the banner in the room, and he suggests they talk about it later. His sister then asks Haruto about his impressions of the royal capital, to which he responds that it's exhausting, and there's nothing better than being at home. He requests that Flay prepare some food for him. Charlotte suggests eating at a restaurant in the capital, but Flay is displeased with the idea, stating that she has put a lot of effort into preparing a meal for Haruto. Haruto's sister intervenes, suggesting that dining out occasionally is not a bad idea, and she'll join them. Haruto thinks to himself that his sister has convinced Flay to eat out, and they begin making preparations. The scene shifts to when they all go out together to a restaurant. Charlotte is thrilled to see so many shops, and the city is bustling with life. She points them to a restaurant, and they all enter to enjoy a fresh meal. After finishing their meal, Charlotte presents them with a large map to familiarize themselves with the city's geography. She assigns them different directions to explore, Flay will take the south, Lisa the west, while Charlotte and Haruto will cover the east. She emphasizes the importance of careful exploration to understand the terrain accurately and avoid causing any trouble. As they begin their journey, it's now just Charlotte and Haruto left. Charlotte takes Haruto's hand and suggests that it's like a romantic rendezvous. Haruto is taken aback, his heart racing, but he's confident that she doesn't mean it that way, as this phrase is only used in certain other situations between siblings. At that moment, Haruto decides to accompany Charlotte to explore the city further to make her happy. They visit a beautiful island known as the Fish Island, 
and Charlotte is delighted by the breathtaking scenery. Next, the scene shifts to a massive bookshop, one of the largest in the capital. They enter, and Charlotte selects a series of books with great enthusiasm. She's overjoyed because Haruto does everything to please her. Then, they move to another part of the city, near the Grand Fountain. Charlotte, caught up in her excitement, doesn't notice a girl running towards her, and they collide. Haruto arrives at the scene, and when the girl sees him, she remembers him as the one who saved her on the road. However, Haruto denies it, claiming that he's seeing her for the first time today. The girl mentions feeling his mana when he healed her, and Haruto admits that he only has two mana. The girl apologizes for her mistake, realizing she might have misjudged him. She bids them farewell and leaves. After she's gone, Charlotte remains focused and stationary, feeling something strange about the girl. She believes the girl is not an ordinary person. With this, Episode 8 comes to an end, leaving the audience eager for more episodes to come.